Chapter 10 Principles of Evolution A key concept, there were theories of biological and geologic change long before Darwin. Early scientists proposed ideas about evolution. Evolution is the biological change process by which descendants come to differ from their ancestors. A species is a group of organisms that can reproduce and have fertile offspring. There were many important naturalists in the 18th century. The first was Carl Linnaeus. He was a Swedish botanist and naturalist. He came up with the classification system from kingdom to species, the binomial nomenclature, the two name system that we use today. They chose Latin because it was a dead language, meaning it wasn't going to change anytime soon. And it's common across all countries. Buffon stated that species shared ancestors rather than arising separately. He came up with this in the 18th century. He also went against the grain by saying that the earth was much older than 6,000 years old, as that was the common belief at that time. Erasmus Darwin was Charles Darwin's grandfather. He was a physician in England and a naturalist and a writer. And one of the things that he said was that evolution was apparent just by watching nature. He wrote poems of nature and he noticed that things changed over time. He saw that more complex forms developed from less complex forms. And Jean Baptiste Lamarck was a French naturalist in the 1800s. He stated that environmental change leads to our use or disuse of a structure. He was best known for his thoughts and experiments on inherited adaptations. His studies on the inheritance of acquired characteristics led him to breed mice. He would cut their tails off. He believed that after so many generations of cutting their tails off, that soon he would have baby mice being born without tails. Obviously, we know that doesn't happen. Theories of geologic change set the stage for Darwin's theory. There were three theories of geologic change. There was catastrophism, gradualism, and uniformitarianism. Catastrophism versus gradualism. Catastrophism, we still see this today. Volcanoes, floods, earthquakes, these type of things will change the surface of the earth and thereby changing the habitat that things can survive. They also believe that this was one of the big things for mass extinctions of all kinds of life, whether it be in the ocean or the dinosaurs, whatever. Gradualism just states that canyons were carved by rivers slowly and gradually, and the earth is gradually changing by small steps over long periods of time. We can see that in the Grand Canyon, where the Colorado River has carved itself out of. Current geologic processes are the same as those at work in the past. Those are the words of James Hutton, father of modern geology. Sir Charles Lyell was the author who agreed with James Hutton, and he wrote Principles of Geology, which was the first textbook on geology. Uniformitarianism is that prevailing theory of geologic change that we still believe in today. What we're saying is the things that happen today are the same things that have always happened. The earthquakes, the storms, the flooding, the plate movement, all of those things have always been at work and they will continue to always be at work even after human beings are long gone. The next concept, Darwin's voyage provided insight on evolution. Charles Darwin was born in England in 1809 to a very wealthy family. He attended medical school for a time, but decided that he wasn't, he wasn't big on becoming a doctor. He didn't really care for the sight of blood. He was drawn to zoology and botany, and this led him to sail as a naturalist on the HMS Beagle in the 1830s. They sailed around the Cape of Africa, the Horn of Africa. During his travels, they studied different species on the Galapagos Islands. Now remember, they didn't have cell phones and they didn't have cameras. And so everything that he recorded, he had to write down in a journal and he had to sketch those pictures. So just like I always say, art and science go hand in hand. He developed, while looking at these unusual species in their different environments, he developed this concept of natural selection. He began writing and 
He ended up writing several books over the course of his life, but his first big groundbreaking book was published in 1859, and it was called On the Origin of Species. This was a huge controversy in the world at the time because it went directly against what the Catholic Church and most religions believed. He went on to write The Variation of Animals and Plants Under Domestication, The Descent of Man, which was another groundbreaker that people lost their minds over, The Expression of the Emotions in Man, and Animals, and several others. His big theory of natural selection was that the strongest will survive. The biggest, the strongest, the smartest, the fastest. They're the ones in the herd that will live long enough to survive in their environment, while the slower ones, the not so bright ones, the not so good looking ones, they're the ones that will get picked off by predators or they won't survive their environment. And so they won't live long enough to pass on their genes, which sounds kind of harsh, but it's a good thing. That's mother nature at work. As a side, side fun fact, Charles Darwin married his first cousin, which we all know that's a problem because your gene pool is pretty small that way. And they ended up having 10 children. Only seven of those survived. Three of those were infertile. So we can see within his own life, he kind of proved his own Darwinism. We got to deepen that gene pool. We can't leave it shallow. Charles Darwin ended up dying at age 73 of heart failure at his country house in England. He had renounced his atheist beliefs from the descent of man before dying. So he came about these beliefs in his younger age that mankind just evolved and that there was no religion that played a role in it. But by the end of his life, for some reason, he decided, hmm, maybe I think I'm wrong. I think I believe in God now. Darwin observed differences among island species. Some of the better known species are the finches and the tortoises. Variation is a difference in a physical trait. Those Galapagos tortoises, remember those are the ones that live on land, not in the water. They live in areas with tall plants and have long necks and legs. The Galapagos finches that live in areas with hard shelled nuts have strong beaks. So we can see the demonstration with these pictures, different bird beaks lead to us believing they have different diets, just like our tortoises here. This guy probably lives in the tall grass and this guy probably does not. An adaptation is a feature that allows an organism to better survive in its environment. A species can adapt to their environment. Adaptations can lead to genetic changes in a population. We can see the picture here, the large ground finch. See how they have short, stout beak for cra cracking open those seeds? The cactus finch has a long, protected beak so they can get to the nutrients from the cactus plant without getting stuck by the prickles. The vegetarian fish, finch, sorry eats the buds off of the plant so they don't need a big strong or a long type of beak. The woodpecker finch has to have a hard sturdy one so they can get in and get the insects. And you can see on this wheel lots of different types of beaks mean different diets. Darwin observed fossil and geologic evidence supporting an ancient earth. He found fossils of extinct animals that resembled modern animals. He found fossil shells high up in the Andes Mountains early on in his Galapagos trip. And we can see today our armadillo friend on the right with some of his armadillo ancestors. Darwin saw land move from underwater to above sea level due to an earthquake. So this tied in with the geological beliefs at the time. He extended his observations to the evolution of organisms. So we can see sea fossils up here, high up in the mountains, 